amigos, it's Brittany. Welcome back to our chapter book, Lions at Lunchtime, Magic Treehouse Once by Mary Pope Osborne. I'm here in my backyard, excited to read for you. So let's see what happened at the end of chapter six. Do you remember? That's right. They headed into the forest after a bird that Annie thought said, follow me. So this is Capitolo Siete, hi there. Pagina Cuarenta. The forest was cooler than the sunny plains. It was filled with shadows and bird calls. Where are you? Jack shouted. Here, said Annie. He found her in a thick glade. Bright rays streamed between the trees. Green leaves and vines swayed in the dappled light. The little gray bird sat in a tree, twittering at them. Yuck, what's that, said Annie. She pointed at a round brown thing hanging from a low branch. Bees buzzed around it. <clears throat> if that's her nest, it's a pretty weird nest, said Annie. That's not a nest, said Jack. It's a beehive. Don't you see the bees? Yikes, said Annie. She stepped back from the tree. But the little bird darted at the beehive and pecked at it. What's she doing, said Annie. The bird kept pecking at the hive. I don't know. Maybe she's as nuts as you, said Jack. Look her up in the book, said Annie. See if it says she's nuts. Are you kidding, said Jack. That nutty bird isn't going to be in this book. Just look. Please, Jack opened his Africa book. He kept turning the pages just as he thought there were no gray bird in the book. Forget it, he said. Keep looking, please, said Annie. Jack turned one more page and there it was, a little gray bird, a beehive, and a tall painted warrior with a spear. I don't believe this, said Jack. Then he read aloud. This bird is called a honey guide. It's both a friend and a helper to the Musai people, an African tribe known for their fierce fighting skills and bravery. Hi, honey guide, Annie called to the bird. I knew you were important. Jack kept reading. The honey guide leads a Musai tribes person to a beehive. The bird waits for him or her to scatter the bees and take the honey. Then the bird feasts on the honeycomb. That's cool, said Jack. They work together, like the zebras and the wildebeest and the gazelles. Yes, said Annie, and she wants us to be her helpers. We have to scatter the bees and leave her the honeycomb. How do we do that, said Jack. He looked back at the book. It didn't say how. Well, maybe we could wave those weeds at them, said Annie. She pointed to some bright green plants that looked like giant fans. Jack put his book and backpack down. He and Annie pulled up the weeds. They waved them near the tree and the bees scattered. Next, Jack grabbed the tree branch and jiggled it. The hive fell to the ground and broke open. Annie stopped and stuck her finger in the golden honeycomb. Yummy, she said, and when she tasted the honey, try it. Jack stuck his finger also in the honeycomb. Look at them. He licked off the golden honey. It was the sweetest honey he had ever tasted. Now the honey guide can get her honeycomb, said Annie. Yes, but she better hurry before the bees come back, said Jack. It's weird, said Annie. Honey is so sweet and good, but to get it, you have to go past a lot of dangerous bees. Wow, that's it, said Jack. It's the riddle. I'm the color of gold and as sweet as can be, but beware of the danger that's all around me. What am I? I get it, Annie whispered, honey. Honey, said Jack, nodding and smiling, that's it. We've answered Morgan's riddle. Let's go home. He stood up to leave. He gasped. Standing in the shadows was a tall man with a spear and a curved sword hanging from his belt. His face was painted in fierce, bright colors. Jack knew at once what he was, a Musai warrior. 
Hi there, Annie said in a small voice. Capitolo ocho, yum. Pagina cuarenta y ocho. The warrior stared back at Jack and Annie. We were helping one of your honey guides, said Annie. The warrior was still as the statue. We didn't mean to steal anything, Jack said. In fact, it's all yours. We've had enough. Lots of good honey still there, Annie said, smiling. The warrior narrowed his eyes. Is he angry, Jack wondered. I'm sorry we were trespassing, said Jack. We come in peace. In fact, we bring gifts. He picked up his backpack and held it to the warrior. The warrior still didn't move. This. Jack held out his book. Nothing. Uh, Jack reached into his pack. He pulled out a big jar of peanut butter. Peanut butter. He pulled out the loaf of bread. Bread. Hey, how about a peanut butter and honey sandwich? Yum, Annie said, watching the warrior. The warrior stared at the food. We'll show you, said Jack. As Jack unwrapped the bread, his hands shook. Annie opened the jar. We don't have anything to spread it with. Use your fingers, said Jack. Excuse me, Annie said to the warrior. I have to use my fingers, but they're pretty clean. An elephant just... Just do it, Annie, said Jack. Okay, okay. She spread the peanut butter onto a slice of bread with her fingers. At the same time, Jack spread the honey from the beehive on another slice. Jack and Annie put their pieces of bread together. Ta-da, Annie said, handing the sandwich to the warrior. The warrior took the sandwich. But he didn't eat it. He just looked at it. Let's make sandwiches for us too, Jack said, so he doesn't have to eat alone. They quickly made two more sandwiches. See, like this, said Annie. She bit into her sandwich. Mmm, yum. Jack took a bite too. Mmm, it was really good. Finally, the warrior bit into his sandwich. He chewed slowly. This is called a picnic, said Annie. They ate their sandwiches in silence. When they finished, Jack screwed the lid on the peanut butter. Not bad, he said. The warrior smiled. He had a kind, dignified smile. Jack and Annie smiled back at him. Then the warrior turned gracefully and vanished into the trees. Wow, said Jack. Part of him wanted to follow the silent warrior through the shadowy forest. Ready, Annie said softly. Jack nodded. Annie started to go. Wait, said Jack. He put away the peanut butter and bread. We're going back to the treehouse, right? We're not going to do anything silly like rescue anything or chase birds, right? Those things aren't silly, said Annie. Don't forget that the bird gave us an answer to the riddle. Oh, right, said Jack. He looked at the little honey guide. She was on the ground, pecking at the honeycomb. Thanks, Jack said to the bird. Have a good feast. Jack put on his pack. Then he and Annie started out the forest. Then they passed the pond. They saw the elephant still splashing. In the water, he lifted his trunk. He seemed to be waving at him. See ya, Annie shouted, waving back. They rounded the bend in the river. Then they started out through the tall grass. As they walked back toward the treehouse, they saw the wildebeest in the distance. They were still crossing the river. They saw a family of zebras grazing together. They saw lone giraffes walking from tree to tree, eating leaves. And they saw a bunch of lions sleeping in the shade of a tree, the same tree that the treehouse was in. Whoops, said Annie. Jack's heart gave a jump. So there they are, he said. And that's the end of chapter eight and friends. Some deer have joined me for the book. I wonder if you can see them. Can you see the three deer? They're right there in my backyard. Uh, also enjoying the book. Uh -huh. Okay, see you next time.